So thanks everyone for tuning in. Um, in the next 30 minutes, I hope to be able to share with you uh, uh, a pretty interesting story about how open source has now become mainstream in such a conservative industry like financial services. And most importantly, why we think this is a major opportunity for you as an individual or whether you represent a commercial open source company. Uh, but let me get started with introducing myself. My name is Gabriele Columbro. I'm the executive director of Finos, the FinTech Open Source Foundation. Uh, we've been in business for about four years now, and we recently joined the Linux Foundation to become the umbrella for any type of open source and open standards based collaboration in such a large industry like financial services. Uh, you know, we're pretty proud of what we accomplished in the last four years. So before we get started, I'd love to take you a quick trip down memory lane. Um, you know, let's be honest, when someone hears uh, uh, open source and financial services, that has been historically an oxymoron. Um, this is such a competitive, conservative industry and as a highly regulated nature uh, creates additional hurdles to actually engage effectively in what we know is now a very, very efficient way of collaborating, i.e. the open source approach. Um, so, you know, when I started pitching uh, this idea to some of the large, largest investment banks in the world, which now compose the core membership of Finas, you know, about four years ago, uh, um, you know, their reaction was, you know, at best lukewarm. Um, you know, who is this Italian guy telling us that we should be giving out our intellectual property, sometimes to our most fierce competitors. But the good news is that in four years, for many factors, which I hope to be able to share with you in an effective way today, open source is finally here. Uh, some of the largest financial institutions in the world are now actively not only consuming, but collaborating in the open, contributing net new code, as well as going after some of the long standing challenges that exist in this industry through an open approach. But as I said, before we look at the present, let's have a, I think it could be useful to have a look at how we got here. Um, it's been an arduous road, definitely a big challenge, but we think we made massive inroads and 2020 has been an amazing year for us. It all starts in 2015 uh, when the Symphony Software Foundation is created. Um, Symphony Software Foundation is the previous name of what is now called Finas. Uh, at that time, some of the largest investment banks in the world came together um, to invest in Symphony a communication and collaboration platform that was especially designed for regulated industries. Uh, the idea was really to create an open ecosystem over a secure and compliant platform uh, that all the banks will be able to not only invest in, not only become end user in, but most importantly, trust with some of the most critical and again, regulated information uh, that exists in the world. And so together with Symphony, the for-profit company, the open core company, if we want, um, a foundation was created. The Symphony Software Foundation was created to create, again, that level of trust, not only amongst the different constituents of the ecosystem, but also towards regulators. Uh, again, some of the most critical financial information, uh, investment banking and trading information would flow across this platform. But of course, the other angle and that sort of materialized in 2016 was that in order to create trust amongst the different players, open source was deemed to be you know, the only way, especially if you consider that Symfony uh, was created or was seeded, if you want, uh, by a major contribution from Goldman Sachs, who again, seeded the platform with their internal collaboration platform called Live Current, and with their HTML5 hybrid container called Paragon. 
as you can well imagine, open source was truly the only way for the rest of the community to put their trust and major investment in the rollout of the Symfony platform. So we spent our first year, uh, I got the honor to be called to run the foundation in late 2015. We spent our first year building a movement around uh, you know, of awareness and understanding of how these large financial institutions could collaborate with each other. But it was really in 2017 that we saw the spark of what we are today, the Open Source Foundation for Financial Services. That happened because of two factors. On one end, we had Deutsche Bank, one of our platinum members, contribute Plexus, Plexus is the interoperability bus that underpins Autobahn, Deutsche Bank's single dealer platform. Um, this was the, actually the first contribution that was not directly related to Symfony. And so that created the idea that maybe, just maybe we could leverage the trust and the community that we built around Symfony beyond the Symfony community to go again, to apply some of the uh, proven to be successful open collaboration methodologies to some of these interoperability, standardization, and merely efficiency, uh, efficiencies in the whole financial services workflow. We then decided to validate this idea. And so we launched the Open Source Strategy Forum in 2017, what was at the time the first and now only open source conference solely focused for financial services. The feedback was amazing. The energy at the conference where we had over 400 people spanning truly the whole uh, org chart in this organization uh, told us that this idea had legs and provided us with an amazing validation of what in 2018 became the FinTech Open Source Foundation. So we rebranded, we expanded our charter, and we launched in April 2018, FinOps. Um, 2018 has been, uh, uh, again, a, an amazing year of growth for us. Not only we continued to add uh, leading financial institutions worldwide, both from the US and Europe, uh, which are the two main areas represented uh, up to date in our community. But we also started to see active engagement, not only from you know, a membership standpoint, but truly active leadership in our community for some of the most renowned open source commercial vendors in the world, uh, open core company, you, you might call them, um, specifically Red Hat and GitHub joined the foundation Again, additionally validating this idea that we could bring together the East Coast and the West Coast uh, through open source and create a very inclusive cross-pollinated community. We also expanded to eight programs, uh, which were thematic areas of our open source projects and our open standards. Again, showing a very, very fast growth for a nascent community. But it was truly 2019 when we achieved uh, what we think is escape velocity. Um, we received a major contribution from JP Morgan, the visualization framework of perspective. Uh, we released our first open standards, FDC3, the Financial Desktop Collaboration Connectivity Consortium. We continued investing in creating awareness understanding and removing frictions for some of these large firms to, again, not only consume open source, but understanding that only by the means of contributing to open source community and allowing their developers, the tens of thousands of developers uh, to contribute in a controlled, regulated, compliant, but permissive framework uh, to open source communities. That was the only way they could really gain the full value out of their open source engagement. And of course, uh, uh, we continued hosting our open source strategy forum, which has become now the largest conference for open sourcing financial services with the energy that only 
uh, uh, bringing a community together in person can generate. 2020 started with a bang. We grew so fast that it became almost a, a, a foregone conclusion for us to join forces with the Linux Foundation. And so earlier this year, uh, despite the pandemic, we joined the Linux Foundation as their umbrella for any type of open source collaboration in financial services. This has been a major step for us as it allows us to even further accelerate our growth, our global expansion, and really the value that we can deliver to our members and to our community at large. But 2020, again, partly, I would say, accelerated by the pandemic and the acceleration of the digital transformation that this industry is living, uh, is really when we think we've reached a major milestone. And I'm gonna uh, talk a little bit more about it in the next few slides. But this year, we think we have the momentum uh, that is truly unprecedented. Uh, we received major contributions from Goldman Sachs, JP Morgan, Morgan Stanley, Deutsche Bank, Citi, uh, and our other community members have grown their engagement drastically. This is truly unprecedented if you think this is an industry where even five years ago, open source contribution was, again, looked at with reluctancy. Uh, we also switched our open source strategy forum to virtual, uh, uh, hosting the largest open source strategy forum this far in October 2020. So all in all, five amazing years. And if you think about the speed of, with which sometimes uh, things move in financial services, this is not a long time. And so when I look at this slide, what you can see on one side are members that fund the foundation and help us accelerate this movement. And on the other side, uh, you know, the, the extension of our projects, we have over 40 projects between incubating and active projects. We recently introduced special interest groups uh, that are growing very fast and are creating uh, uh, interest groups, coalescing interest across many of these firms uh, I am very proud. Uh, and as I said, uh, this is a very inclusive community. Uh, uh, we of course have representation from some of the large investment banks in the world. In fact, 10 of 11 uh, of the top US investment banks are members of Finos. But as you can see, we're looking to really bring together, uh, you know, big tech, fintechs, uh, financial institutions, both on the sell side and the buy side, and more recently, regulators, as you're gonna hear it in the next uh, few slides. This is a huge area of interest and expansion for us. And of course, we also have associate members. We see ourselves as being an open source enabler uh, uh, for industry consortia and other organizations that maybe are not as familiar with the open source methodology and the efficiency of that. So let's switch gears. Uh, of course, who doesn't love a nice logo, logo slides? But the truth is that we are, our success is measured in the contribution and adoptions of the projects that we have in the foundation, in the problems, in the business problems that actually we can solve in this industry. You might have heard or you might not. So maybe a reminder, we just recently announced uh, a major contribution from Goldman Sachs. This has been definitely uh, the highlight of this year, uh, over 10 months in the works after we announced that in November last year. Legend, formerly known as Alloy, is a very powerful uh, logical modeling platform, which includes a Visual Studio. It underpins, is underpinned by a, a DSL and a, and a whole programming language called Pure. Um, but most importantly, it allows uh, modeling data out of existing data sources and provides several connectors to create bindings in many different languages. And the value of that is not only, of course, a great piece of software that you can download, install, and that seriously is used across Goldman Sachs, 
in several use cases from regulatory reporting to price modeling to data lineage. Um, but the great value for our community is also that we are, as Finos, hosting an instance of legend, as you can see at finos.org slash legend, you can get access, it's open to everyone. And that has allowed us to bring together the industry, not necessarily developers, but business folks, business analysts, the, you know, which have and feel the pain on a daily basis by the lack of standardization in terms of industry-wide models. We were able to invite them and pilot collaboration on several areas of interests. And this has become for us a major additional way of collaborating. Of course, we welcome you to learn more at legend.finos.org, to consume the software and contribute to it at github.com slash finos.legend, slash legend, sorry. Um, but we again also see the major value of us playing uh, the neutral role uh, in hosting collaboration of our community on truly industry-wide models. And if you are from the industry, you can imagine how powerful this tool is, also when it comes to collaborating with regulators. Um, we talked about legend, um, but I wanted to show you here a little bit more a sample of our uh, project landscape which by the way, if you go to landscape.finos.org, you'll see the full extent of our 40 plus projects. Um, we briefly touched on perspective. Perspective is a very mature web assembly based uh, interactive visualization component that is very much geared for financial services, a real data, real time data streaming. Um, as I said, not only this is used in production by multiple financial institutions who are mutualizing uh, uh, this component, but it also has over a thousand stars on GitHub. It's a very, very advanced piece of technology which has contributors now from several uh, different institutions within the industry and beyond. Uh, so make sure you check it out. Um, from perspective to walls. Um, walls is one of the largest contributions that we received to date uh, from our platinum member of Deutsche Bank. Um, you know, think about it as a wiki, structured wiki for your architecture and enterprise infrastructure. If you think about these large institutions with tens of thousands of developers, uh, and thousands, tens of thousands of employees really, and a lot of those are regulated employees. Uh, this is a regulated, these are typically regulated entities that have regulatory reporting as well uh, as a requirement. They need to have a very clear picture at any point in time of their infrastructure, their architecture, their equipment, which applications are running on that and who is using it. Uh, Walls does an amazing job at that and is adopted and contributed by several institutions. So again, make sure you check that out. We'd love to hear your feedback and your contributions. Um, from deep down in the infrastructure to our main open standard, FDC3 is uh, a standard for interoperability uh, for traders' desk desktop applications for actually best any type of desktop applications. Um, it stands for the Financial Desktop Connectivity and Collaboration Consortium was started by OpenFIN in 2017, but has now reached uh, a very mature stage in which is used by many financial institutions for their internal application development. And of course, by many software vendors, uh, uh, FinTech vendors uh, that are striving for a much better integration in the financial workflow, both in the front office, mid office and back office. Finally, last but not least, uh, Morphir has been another major contribution that we received in 2020 uh, from our platinum member, Morgan Stanley. Um, you know, this is a very modern piece of technology uh, with cutting edge uh, 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 languages um, that does a great job at representing the business logic of your application in a technology agnostic fashion. So in a way, 
what legend is for data, Morpher is for our business logic. And we think, again, there is a huge potential here to be used uh, in isolation or in conjunction with other of our projects for the most disparate use cases, including potentially regulatory reporting. So as you can see, we have a very broad and deep project portfolio. So I hope this can give you a little bit of an idea of how you can not only consumer software, which is all Apache 2 licensed, but also contribute to it. And if you want to abstract a little bit, uh, sort of where, you know, more generally does Finos play in this, in, you know, in the financial services stack? Well, if you walk back a couple of years, uh, you know, you could look at the financial services stack as largely proprietary with some open source sprinkled here and there. Um, oftentimes in a maybe not structured way, the supply chain, the open source supply chain being not as developed as is for sure today. But if you break it down, you clearly see that there are uh, a couple of layers at the bottom of the stack that are actually general purpose, they are horizontal, they're not specific to financial services, but there's a whole lot of technology that we think in our community not only is specific to financial services, but it's also by and large non-differentiated. And that's where Finos plays. That's the Finos sweet spot, our bread and butter. So now you can see how, you know, the partnership with the Linux Foundation becoming, uh, uh, you know, having such a, a, a big mothership uh, 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 that can help us accelerate not only our delivery, but actually allows us to cover the full stack. Because if you look at the lower layers, that's where you have very advanced and very mature foundations like, of course, the Linux kernel, uh, CNCF and Kubernetes, Node.js, um, you know, Hyperledger. And so we think that uh, with this combination, we have an opportunity to really create a fully open core uh, for the financial services industry. Um, so it should be no surprise. Uh, and I promise this is the last uh, slide where I'm gonna be bragging about our community, but it shouldn't be surprising at this point that uh, October 2020 has marked the largest number of commits on record in our foundation. Uh, by the way, shattering the previous record by almost 40%. Uh, this community is growing. Uh, this community is strategically engaged in these collaborations. And we think uh, uh, this is an important milestone for us. But before we move forward and look ahead, you know, I'm sure you're wondering why is that? Uh, how is it that after decades of largely proprietary or sort of behind the scenes type collaboration, this industry is actually embracing open source? Well, there are a few reasons. I think three main classes of reasons. The first one is business reasons. Um, there simply is not any longer an infinite amount of money to throw at technology problems in this industry. On one hand, uh, margins and spreads are uh, shrinking. On the other hand, the bottom line is constantly growing, uh, oftentimes because of increased regulatory spend. So in a way, the uh, profit that can be used for tech investment it's not where it used to be about 10 years ago. If you pair that with uh, the mandate uh, to achieve the digital transformation, uh, again, I don't always love this word, but it is true that new technologies, the new generation, uh, just simply the uh, requirements of end users are forcing this industry to innovate faster. Uh, are forcing this industry to be more and more efficient. Uh, in addition to the business reasons, there's of course primarily uh, um, technology reasons that are also accelerating the rise of open source in this industry. Uh, the move to cloud, 
is absolutely uh, fundamental. Um, you know, this industry is now realizing that even within the regulatory constraints, it's fundamental to uh, embrace cloud. And that's an element of neutralization. Hardware is being neutralized and that has opened the eyes on the possibility of neutralizing the remaining layers of the stack uh, uh, where there is no competitive IP, where there's no crown jewels there. In addition to that, um, decentralized technologies, uh, blockchain or the B word, um, whether it's true or not, it is threatening the very definition of decentralized large institutions. And so it's forcing them to reevaluate their very way of doing business. Uh, finally, just a note on talent. Uh, it is well known that the US is in a talent crunch. If that's true, uh, uh, finan the financial service industry is in an even deeper talent crunch because they have to face the competition of big tech and you know, the West Coast. So once again, finding a more efficient way to go uh, to not only uh, access a broader talent pool, but also to retain talent by allowing them to participate to open source community and continue fostering their own profile has become paramount. Finally, there are several ecosystem reasons that are pushing, again, a different customer experience and therefore driving the need for efficiency in open source. Um, you know, the fintech wave is a reality. Fintechs are continuing to ankle bite and several use cases of these largest incumbent financial institutions. But on the flip side, there's still a large, almost sometimes monopolistic uh, 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 set of vendors that are honestly open for disruption, especially by open source and by open source companies, and I would argue by open core companies. And so if you put this all together, it is pretty easy to understand why open source is here to stay. Now, you know, there are of course uh, uh, systemic reasons why open source has seen so much of a rise in the last couple of years. But I also wanna say that Finas, uh, I had promised to stop bragging, but, um, I, I wanna think that the help that Finos has given to this movement has been fundamental uh, to grow. Um, not only we of course provide IP and a trusted govern IP, uh, uh, we are an IP container, an Apache licensed IP container for the commons in this industry. We provide the strong governance around it, uh, but we also work with our projects to grow their contribution and adoption. Uh, as well as with our members. These are large institutions. Uh, we need to help them day in, day out to realize the value that they're getting from open source and continue to invest in it. Um, I touched on our governance. Uh, I'm not gonna spend a lot of time on it, but uh, I just wanna make the point that we of course have a board of directors that is composed largely by our members, but our projects are governed by contribution. Uh, as you would expect in any community, the more you contribute, the more you have influence on the project. And contribution is open to anyone. So we hope, certainly my hope at the end of this presentation is that uh, you find a reason to contribute. We also provide a platform to our projects, what we call the Open Developer Platform, which is really meant to, on one hand, relieve the contributors of you know, the hard part of validating IP, validating security, producing financial services, great software. And of course, from the consumer side of the house, you know, making sure that we can put the FINA stamp on that software and ensure that again, it's software that is safely consumable for such a highly regulated uh, industry. Finally, uh, I talked briefly about it before, but we continue to invest in making this industry more and more open source ready. We have bi-weekly meetings open to everyone and we produce material that enables firms, again, available in our knowledge base, which is linked up there, um, to overcome hurdles on the technology, technology tool chain, legal, compliance, and really business understanding of open source. And you know, 
If you look at the contributions that we received this year, we think this program has been absolutely outstanding uh, in getting the industry where it is right now. So if you are a financial institution, we very much welcome to join. You'll find a whole lot of friends uh, uh, from other institutions who can help and let you know how they address some of these challenges. So I want to touch quickly on an initiative that uh, it's very important for us. Um, we launched it about six months ago and we've seen such an early momentum. Uh, we are bringing in the regulators in the conversation. We think there is a major advantage for regulators to leverage the open source model to solve some of the regulatory problems which are in fact at the crossroads of policy and technology. And open source has proven over and over again to be a unique and outstanding tool to address those problems. If you add on that, the regulators are all about transparency, then you can easily see why the early reception from them has been definitely excited. Um, check out our initiative. We have a special interest group uh, that has been recently approved by our board. We welcome your input. We think there is a major, major potential here uh, to improve not only how the industry works, but the conditions of all of us downstream users of the financial services complex. Now, quickly looking ahead before I wrap, um, you know, I, I like to think that open source and financial services is like a marriage, it's like a love relationship. We just married uh, after dating for a few years. Uh, but the truth is, um, there's still a lot to do to make sure that uh, we can uh, achieve some of the very worthy challenges that we can solve together as an industry and beyond. And so that's why when I look ahead, the first thing is finding those higher order challenges that we can solve together. We have a major opportunity. Uh, this is a great thing that we have going in the industry. And so this industry not only can solve problems for the financial services industry, but can impact things like financial inclusion, sustainability and ESG, um, diversity and inclusion, which remains a huge problem in open source communities and in the financial services industry. Of course, we think another key component that is missing here is creating a truly thriving open source commercial ecosystem. If you are in the audience and you uh, are a FinTech or just an open core company, Take a look at our projects. We think there is major potential for commercialization of some of these projects, which of course we hope it would be in part reinvested in the evolution of our community. Um, as we all know, throwing a project on GitHub doesn't make it uh, immediately successful. So we will continue nurturing our projects in the open by including all the constituents out there, both from a geographic standpoint together with our uh, LF mothership, we are expanding quickly towards APOC, but also continuing to involve different constituents in the industry, whether it's regulators, uh, whether it's other industry consortia, or whether it is you know, commercial FinTech or tech companies. So a lot to come in 2021, and I hope uh, uh, you'll be part of this community. And as I wrap, um, I want you to understand that whether you're a bank, uh, whether you're a fintech, whether you are a big tech or a cloud service provider, whether you are a regulator, and I would add whether you are an individual looking potentially for your next job, there are advantages for each one of you. Let's be honest here, nobody's here for charity. Uh, there's always a business advantage for each of the players to be involved. But we do think that open source and financial services is in fact a positive sum game uh, by engaging in properly governed open source collaboration we can drive faster innovation better interoperability we think we can help in financial inclusion and so many of these very worthy challenges uh, uh, that can be solved through open source and so i hope uh, that I've given you enough ideas or enough motivations to at least take a look at our community, 
check out our website, finas.org. Join our GitHub organization at github.com slash finas. And I hope I'll be able to welcome you in the community pretty soon. Thank you. Thank you.